Hello everybody, so today's video is going to be me reading the comments to my Selective Mutism video that I did like months and months ago. So if you haven't gone and watched that then you can do it if you'd like to. Um, basically, for those of you that don't know what Selective Mutism is, I'll try and leave the definition on the screen. But it's basically an anxiety disorder where somebody can't talk in certain situations but they're able to talk in others. And I couldn't really talk to people at school that much um, or... Um, just new people I've never met before. I really really struggled with that and also at home I was completely fine and I think um, I was quite loud at home to counteract the fact I was really quiet at school um, So that is basically what I'm going to be replying to the comments there If you want to hear a little bit more about sort of the condition then you can go and watch that video Me and my mum also did make a video on what it's like from a mother's perspective So if you also want to go and watch that I'll link both of the videos down in the description if you want to go and watch it um, just to get sort of background information um, but today I'm going to be reading the comments and sort of just talking through the comments some people have left me sort of their stories so that's going to be quite interesting for me to talk through the first one says I've had selective mutism ever since I can remember and I like that you're talking about it not many people do and that comment got 61 likes and it's the top comment um, I want to talk about it because I agree, not many people do talk about it. I That video has got over 10,000 views now, which I think is quite a lot um, for my channel anyway. And I think it's because there's not that many videos out there talking about it. It's not a popular thing or a common thing. It's just something that happens a lot, but it's not talked about a lot. Um, and I would say it's more common in children than it is in adults. But I think if it goes into adulthood, then that can be quite difficult. Um, personally, I've recovered now. I still have times when I do like have the feeling of almost feeling like I can't talk. But then because I've got over it, I kind of know how to get myself out of that situation and just sort of force myself. It's like you're battling with your own mind. And sometimes you can't. Like sometimes your mind takes over and it's like, no, nope, you can't say anything. Somebody said, anyone who has selective mutism want to be friends and um, that got 46 likes. So there's a big community of people out there with selective mutism, as you can see, wanting to be friends. Someone said, I won't say names because I just don't want to. Um, someone said, I've had selective mutism all my life. I'm now 25 and still the same. Wow. Okay, well, I would say I sort of fully recovered. I don't know. I can't really say fully, but I kind of started recovering in high school so secondary school um so i was like i don't know like 14 15 like fully um and to be 25 years old and still suffering from it is quite difficult because you've got so many things like work um you uni or whatever that you've that you're going to and to still suffer from it it's really difficult because i think life changes kind of helps you to get better and if that hasn't helped then i just don't know Someone says, I am suffering from this right now. It's really hard at school because there are people who just don't understand me, but I know that I'm not alone. So yeah, that's completely true. Obviously, school is probably the main thing where people struggle with because being at school is where there's a lot of new people that you haven't met before or people that you know and you just can't talk to. And yeah, I think that's a big issue that teachers in particular just don't understand um, like what it is. They don't understand about it. And I think a lot of teachers are way too strict on children that don't put their hand up or don't say things. Um, they don't really deal with it very well. And it's probably not their fault. It's just they're not educated enough. And really, from experience, some teachers just don't help at all and they kind of make it worse. Um, and if I was a teacher, I would, you know, really kind of not force any student into doing things like that. I don't know, it's hard to sort of explain. Somebody said, to be honest, I've never heard of this before, really interesting, which kind of readdresses the point that people don't really talk about it that much, that like a lot of people don't even know what it is. Um, someone says, I was diagnosed when I was three and I'm nearly 18 and I still can't talk to anyone but my mum and sisters. So obviously they've had it for a long portion of their life and I suppose if you know that you, you were worse when you were younger and you're slightly better now, then you sort of can feel as if you're recovering. And I feel like the worst thing for me is, is that when I had the condition, I didn't know I had it, which is good. 
because I think when you think you've got something wrong with you, you almost accept that that's what it's going to be and you don't even try. Um, it's difficult, but that's how I feel in my own mind. Like I've accepted there's something wrong with me um, and that's just how it's going to be. Like that's my brain. But if you don't know, then naturally things start to get better sometimes. Sorry, I've had to move down a little bit. Um, someone said, I relate so much. I was a child in the 80s where there was no understanding at all. Um, back in like, I don't know, like years and years ago, people used to call it elective mutism, which basically means it's the child's choice not to talk and that they were choosing not to say anything because people believed that they were just choosing not to talk to people when actually it's selective mutism, which means that they can't actually talk like it there's a like you physically can't it's the most difficult thing in the world to explain but you can't like it's so so weird it's like someone says hello and i really want to say hello back but i just couldn't and it's so weird but true like it's really hard to explain someone says i was born with selective mutism and severe social phobia i feel like i can't connect with anyone in school and i feel like an outcast outside of the house I know it's really difficult like being out, you know, being like that when you go outside and you just feel like somebody different and I think that's the thing, like you feel like you are different and other people, like speaking to people that I know now, that know me now, they did think I was weird too when I was younger and they do notice that you are different and it's really um, strange but I think teachers need to pick up on this because they need to realise if somebody's not having like the friends or um, or they're on their own and I don't think teachers did realise, I don't think, you know, that they knew. Um, thank you for making this video because I've had this since I was five and nobody ever really understands what it is. I hope more people understand it because it has affected my life so much. It's an absolutely awful feeling and when I was younger some people didn't understand it and they thought it was a choice of not speaking and they would yell at me and it would make it so much worse. I think that is 100% summing it up. Like, um, people just not understanding and I think even now when you explain it to some people they don't get it and I think it's because for those of you that don't suffer any like anxiety at all you just won't understand at all what the feeling is and it really annoys me because I wish I was one of those people that could just say what I wanted do what I wanted and kind of go into situations with full confidence because that would be amazing um and you know some people just don't get it and they almost think that um, people with anxiety are just sort of making it up or just kind of just a little bit worried but it's completely different like I tell you now it honestly is and the fact that teachers and people like shout at you um, I get that because I've been in that situation they just they almost feel like if they shout at you to make you do something then that's helping you but it really isn't somebody commented is it harder to start talking to people you know already it is for me yes 100% even now I when I meet somebody that I don't know I have full confidence because I don't know them they have nothing to do with me no sort of relation to me in any way and I can act however I want however if they have like if they are if I even know them or I don't mean family I kind of mean just that like I know who they are or they have some significance in my life I'll have to see them again then I have sort of that feeling of anxiety in me even now and I know exactly what you mean okay somebody said that they don't even like to talk on the phone and I get that because when I was younger I hated talking on the phone because it's almost like talking in person and especially because when you answer the phone you don't know who it's gonna be and you're obviously you're mobile you do but the home phone when I was younger I didn't know who it was going to be so I always used to get really scared to answer the phone I'll skip the ones that are sort of just talking about things I've already talked about um I've had selective mutism since I was born it has caused me to miss out on so so much of my life I've never been able to participate in gym classes and raising my hand in class is a nightmare school was and still is hell I've been bullied because I couldn't talk and I've been taken advantage of my entire life by classmates and other peers because of selective mutism, I have trust issues because of people embarrassing me and taking advantage of me. Now, that comment I 100% get. People will pick up on the fact that you're a shy person um, and that you don't want to talk. <laughs> Sorry, Tommy's... Uh, Excuse me, I'd like not to be mentioned, please. Tommy's watch went off. Um, people will always um, take advantage of the fact that they think that you can't talk. And like that's really annoying 
for me now because if somebody was to say something to me now I would 100% say something back or like deal with the situation how I think I should whereas when you're younger when I was younger and I had the condition I just couldn't say anything and that's the worst thing because then they know that you're not going to say anything back so they can just keep saying and saying and saying comments so yeah um, people always try to use sign language with me and I don't know any sign language so obviously in that case people thought that you didn't know how to talk um, so they were using sign language you need to be taught sign language before you can like use sign language so I don't know why people were doing that okay I'm 12 years old and I have selective mutism I feel like I'm having anxiety over everything whether it's my health my pet's health or my family's health I can't stop worrying and at school I feel like there's something in my throat and I can't speak I get that especially when answering the register I used to get really scared um, I try so hard but I can't my grandfather is so rude he yells at me for not speaking again people not understanding thinking that it's your choice but it really isn't um when I was nine, I spoke to him for the first time since I was a baby. He ignored me and later he said, see what it feels like, which is horrible. That is horrible for him to like, for someone to say something to him for the first time and then him to ignore it to see what it feels like. He doesn't sound like a nice person. Like people don't usually act like that. Um, someone said, I can't talk to most of the people in my friend group because I'm afraid that they will judge me. I 100% get what you mean that I think in my selective mutism video I did stress that part of it is sort of lack of self-confidence feeling like people are judging you you feel like people are going to think bad badly of you um the way that you act it's sort of feeling of like you feel like everyone's watching you like if you say something slightly wrong that they're going to judge you forever and I know that sounds really ridiculous but it's true and at the time there's just a million different things going through your head and it just stops you from saying anything okay I have two daughters who have selective mutism both also have ADHD and dyslexia it seems to be hereditary okay so basically she's written some more stuff so if you want to go and check out these comments and you can go and look at the comments but I won't like read everything out but basically selective mutism can be linked to many different disorders like obviously ADHD, dyslexia, um, autism and what else is there? Loads of other things anyway. Um, and my, when I was younger my parents thought that I had Asperger's, that's it. They thought I had Asperger's um, because of the symptoms being very similar. Um, and she said it seems to be hereditary and my dad kind of like the things that he describes how he was when he was younger in certain situations is exactly what it is um where you want to say something but you're so scared of it coming out wrong but then when you do have the courage to say it it does come out wrong it honestly does it comes out wrong and that's why we worry <laughs> like you would think that we're just worrying it the word will come out wrong but when it does we do say it wrong it's so weird Someone said, I can, well, not so easily, but I can talk to complete strangers that I probably will never see again, but not my own friends or best friends um, or anyone except family. Um, and they find it easier to talk to people online. It's so much easier to talk to people online because you don't have to face to face see them. You can just message them. It's easy. Um, but I know what you mean about being able to talk to strangers because they don't mean anything to you. Like with a stranger, you can pretend that you're this person you can put on a different accent and they wouldn't know any different so it's not like if you want to suddenly become confident um they wouldn't realize there's any difference whereas if you've known someone for ages and you suddenly become this confident person it's like you think oh my god they're going to be thinking all this about me I have selective mutism but I found it easier to cope with when I started horse riding so there's loads of different things that can kind of help and um, it helped me when I came up to secondary school obviously it helps different people to do different things and that's why it's really difficult to give advice on but yeah obviously it helped this person when they went horse riding um, somebody else said um, OMG I've had selective mutism basically my whole life I'm almost 19 now and I mean like really bad my whole life is just filled with uncomfortable situations and that's what it is like every single day there's going to be something that happens that you are going to find uncomfortable and when you suffer with the condition you know that that's going to be happening like I worry I would worry for something that would happen 
And then as soon as that situation's over and done with, whether it was fine or not, I would then start worrying because I'd know that there'd be another situation. So every single day is just difficult because there's always gonna be something. Someone said, I've, been recent, I've recently been meeting up with people with autism who brought up the subject of selective mutism. I'm starting to recognise why I didn't start speaking until I was about six. I'm finding out more about it because of seemingly intractable communication problems I'm experiencing over 30 years later. Um, there's loads of different causes to selective mutism. Again, it's hereditary potentially, or it could be um, speech issues. I have done research into it because I'm doing an EPQ on it. Um, but yeah, speech problems like not being able to talk is also another one. Um, having a stutter, that kind of thing. Suffering some kind of trauma. So some kind of trauma might happen that means you are like very fearful and you feel like you can't talk. Um, things like that. Again, somebody said that they um, had selective mutism until they went up to another school and they think it's because nobody knew them, which is like, it sounds strange, but I, I agree. Like, I think if you don't know anybody, then that helps. Someone said, um, I always have a lot of anxiety when I have to walk into a room or a large group of people. And I completely get this. Like, I think now I'm a lot better because I'm able to just go straight in. My mind has like kind of overpowered that feeling and it's just like go and do it um but occasionally there'll be a situation where you have to even just enter a room and you just can't do it and some people are like well how like they just don't get it and that just makes me so angry because it's like can you just realize that some people have got problems and there is that like barrier of i can't do it i just can't do it and then you just you just can't do it it's so difficult and i really wish that I wasn't like that. Someone said, I cried watching this because everything completely relates to me and I got into trouble a lot in middle school for not talking. Um, now that I'm in high school though, I've gotten better and can actually talk and have fun at school instead of being trapped and scared. Trapped and scared is definitely what it feels like. You feel like you're trapped in this screen where you're watching everybody else but you can't interact with them. Um, and yeah, getting in trouble because of it. And I know that it sounds ridiculous to get in trouble for not talking but you do. And I have memories of being really small and being put on the naughty chair. And I do not know why. Like, I honestly, like that's probably one of my strongest memories. I don't know why. And when you're a child and you don't understand why you've been told off, it's really difficult to kind of um, understand. Okay, so I'm actually going to um, stop there. I will do a part two to this video in a few weeks time because there's so many comments and honestly it's so interesting for me to read them because unfortunately I haven't been able to reply to the majority of these comments because I don't see them that uh, YouTube doesn't notify me when people comment on this video for some reason only occasionally so I haven't been able to reply to most of them. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe down below and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye!